Mustafa, we'll start, we'll start off with you, Arthur. I mean, mm -hmm. you must just be really pleased to have you know, re signed with Gloucester Rugby. Yeah, no, it is it's sort of a no brainer. Like, the club as a whole is always where I want to sort of make my rugby career. Um, and yeah, when the offer came on the table, I, I sort of jumped to the opportunity to get my spot back in the team and hopefully keep progressing the way I am. Yeah, and Barry, I mean, to have your son, someone, you know, having played for Gloucester Rugby yourself, to have your son following in your footsteps, you must be so proud. Yeah, well, it's great. No, it's great. I'm glad he's going the way he is, really. You don't know what's going to happen, but it's. Um, He's sort of taken every step in his stride and he's going well, really. It's great that the club are keen to keep him on and give him the opportunity, really. And let's talk a little bit, Arthur, about you growing up and getting into rugby. I believe it was Stone the World Rugby Club. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little, <laughs> little bit about why, why and how you got into rugby. Um, well, I used to play football. I think all my mates from primary school, football was a sort of popular thing to do. So I started off playing football and then one day just come off the field and sort of went, you yeah, know, I don't really want to play football anymore. And then I think quickly, That's like, 12. Yeah, 12 years old. And then quick as you like, Dad got me up to a, a Stowe, the local club. I think we were it was quite, the well, It was quite a relief, really. Because you can imagine, because we had played rugby, we played at Gloucester, played at Stowe. So we, every question I used to get when I used to go up to the club, when's your lad coming up to play? When's your lad coming up to play? I said, well, he'll play when he's ready. If he wants to play, you know. It's, thinking with a lot of children, you know, you play, see a lot of the guys playing mini rugby is great. But it's a long time playing rugby. And if they don't want to play it, don't let them. Parents push. If parents push to make them do what they want, the parents want them to do, it's not going to work. It's going to bounce back on you sometimes. So you have to just let them go with the flow, play sport, play any sport, enjoy it. You, know, you did a bit of tennis, you did a bit of everything, haven't you? Yeah. So it's, it was good. But it was a great relief when he said, <laughs> came to Dad and said, Dad, I'm not going to play rugby next year. Oh, OK, son, if you insist. Yes, <laughs> that'll do. Yeah, that's so, you know, that's Definitely. great. And I mean, you always a tall lad, were you always destined for the second uh, row? Yeah, I think everyone used to say when I started, oh, what position are you going to be? Oh, my dad said I'm going to be a second row. Born and bred second, second, second row. row. So yeah, I yeah, know sort of, I played about with the back row when I was a bit younger. That was only in junior sort of stuff. But yeah, as soon as I started, well, as soon as I hit the Gloucester pathway, I was second row out and out. Always one of the taller ones. Um, and yeah, I know, it's great. Yeah, it's really interesting what you said about sort of enjoyment and mm. playing different sports as you're growing up. Do you think you know that's maybe something overlooked by young young athletes coming through at the moment? Um, I, I think it is. Yeah, I, I definitely think it is. I think you you can pick up a lot of. There's rugby's rugby, okay, but there's a lot of things that cross over football, other boy sports, eye to contact with your ball sports and that. So there is, you know, the more sports you can do as a young person, I think is great. Gives you more, you know, bows in your bag really, sort of have a crack at it. Definitely. Yeah, no, and it always keeps you alive as well because like. You, like you say, you get bored. You play rugby, 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 yet eventually you get bored of it. So I had the like, luxury of being able to do that and, like you say, play a bit of tennis as well. And like every sport at school as well, I used to enjoy it. Like never had, a, well, obviously rugby was a favourite, but I used to get stuck in at football and, you know, hockey even. I had a spell of hockey. So yeah. everything, like you say, the more you can do, the more enjoyment you get out of the sport. And then, like you say. Yeah, Barry, let's talk a little bit yeah. about you, you playing. Like, I mean, how, mu how much has it changed in... I mean, just how great is it for you? I knew, I knew that would be the question. How has it changed? Well, then, you know, it's still, it's still rugby, isn't it? At the end of the day. Yes, we were amateurs when I played. So you just turn up, we trained twice a week, played on a Saturdays, and that was it. But it's still rugby. And you still, I think, OK, it's all professional, it's slightly different now, but you still have got to have that desire to play rugby, I think. Even at the top level, you've still got to want to play the game. It's not, you can't just be good at it. You've got to want it. It's got to be in there somewhere. You want to play and for your club. And that's a great thing with Gloucester is going back to the way it was when we played. Everybody was local. I was an outsider, but I'm only up from just outside Stone the World. It's not that far away. But it was everybody was sore from Gloucester. And that's what you've got to go back to because that's where you get your passion. Because I, I remember when I played, I the guys I played with, one of the most passionate guys that I ever played with at all because they wanted to win. We went out, bam, and that was it. We are Gloucester. So yeah. it's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, and no, Arthur, I mean, it feels like there's been a real focus on the academy at the moment and, you know, those local players coming up through. You've sort of been quite a tight-knit group, I guess, from, for a couple of years now. Mm. That's really important, isn't it, to have that academy focus and local dads playing for the club? It is, yeah, because, yeah. I mean, so there's like a core group. So in my year who came through, I mean, we're all local, so we're all in, when you were younger, the DPP, like, areas. I think Harry Taylor was the only one who was maybe Bristol, so and all the rest of us at Cheltenham. So even then, you're sort of you're growing into your rugby career around the same people who are you're now effectively with now. I think that's one of the most important things. I remember 
Hoggy, the academy, um, head of academy now, he say he wants to keep this tight net group because when he played as well, just like my old man said now, you, you grow up with the players you play with and makes you such a tight net group. And I think that's also what we're seeing in the first team today. I mean, there's not a lot of in and outs. When you're in, you're in. And that sort of gets the group so much tighter. I think if you start building those bonds at like the age we are now, you know, 20 years old, we're only at the start of our careers. Mm-hmm. By the time we're hopefully full flow into the first team, we'll be able to know how we act, what someone's good at, what someone's bad at, where they need to help. And then it sort of makes everything flow a whole lot easier. And yeah, I guess, Barry, that's sort of what it was like when you were playing. Yeah, no, exactly. It's that last 20 minutes. Yeah. So a few years, you know, Gloucester waned in the last 20 minutes over a few seasons. But they seem to have got it back now that you're, you dig in now. And that's because you know you, you don't want to let your mates down. And that, that's okay, it's professional now and you're all getting paid, whatever. But you're still, the good thing I think is what Lars is saying there is you're still mates. So you dig in for your mates. And that's the important thing. That's what makes a difference. It's that little probably- bit. Sorry to interrupt, but I think a little bit, again, the sort of the fact that you're local um, and come through together obviously helps with that digging in together. Yeah. And also the fact that you've got had your dad playing in the shirt as well, that's got <laughs> to make you want to give a little bit more. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing, like, looking at the grand scheme of things, like, I think I've always wanted to be a gloss player, looking up to my old man as sort of one of the main people I want to impress. And, you know, it's exciting. You know, I've had a couple of luxuries putting on the shirt at the moment, but it sort of makes you hungry for more. You really want to put your, your stamp down on sort of the shirt and say this is mine and yeah also it's good for local rugby as well because like the guys at Stowe love it they follow what Arthur does and it's that's important that get them playing as well and they realise then the young lads then realise crikey if I stick at rugby and have a go I could do what Arthur's doing you know in our day it was different in our day we didn't have academies you just turned up training you turned up the start of season we had a trial game well bish bang if you're any good yeah you come next week and that was it there was no sort of Build up, build up, build up. It was in, either in or out. No, there you go, that was it. Yeah, that's good all enough, you're good enough. You must have some really fond memories of playing here at King's Home. I mean, are there any, any stories that really stand out? How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I couldn't say that. I, I remember we played Bath. Bath was the D team in the, when we were Gloucester. And we played them in the league here. We actually beat them. But I remember poor old Chilcot got sent off. But he just stood up. It was Kevin Dunn and that. He just stood up in the front row. And Chilcott went slap, slap, slap like that, off. And he just started walking. And that was it. He was gone. And it was that. That was, there's big derby. Still, there's still derbies now. It, in those days, I don't, this is going to make me feel old, but it was a derby because, you know, most of the Gloucester fans will tell you, who do we want to beat? Anybody, Bath. We'll beat Bath. So it really was in those days. And we were all Gloucester lads. And they were, most of them were Bath lads. Bath were changing a bit, they would get guys from outside, but they're still, it was lost to Bath and we had to have a go at them. We also played in the semi-final out here where we lost, just, but that was just... The, they talk about the shed, the atmosphere of the shed is good now, but in those days, you know, it's unbelievable. You just, we just ran out on that pitch and the cheer and the roar, it just makes you feel 10 foot tall, you know, nearly as tall as Arthur now, but, you know. <laughs> but it did, and that was the passion and it was just... You were playing for the love of it, we weren't playing for bonus, we weren't playing for money, we playing because we wanted to play rugby. And Malcolm Preedy and those guys were brilliant in those days. Yeah. Good old John Brain in the second row. He was a lovely chap. Yeah, he was a, take no rubbish from anybody. And he'd tell you, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, get and do this. And I, when you're in that scrub at number eight, you've got a bloody push, not just stand there. So as you know what back row boys are like a bit, but it was, yeah, it was good fun. It was great fun in those days. And I'm sure you've heard, you know, stories like that, and I'm sure there are others as well that probably can't mm. be repeated on camera. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hearing stuff like that, that must really sort of, I don't know, be, be really special and make you really inspired, I guess. It m- must have inspired you to want to play rugby. It is, hearing those amazing stories that like, you still laugh every time you hear them or you still like giggle. And it's also, one thing that's made me always want to play rugby is, my dad's got the same bunch of mates he's had since he was my age. Now, he still goes up to the club, has a pint with them at the game. And that sort of was the main focus for me as well, because it's not, yeah, you make some unbelievably good memories, but you make some unbelievably good mates as well. Mm. And they wouldn't, memories wouldn't be the best unless you have someone who interrupts a story because they can tell it better or they laugh in just as hard as you are because they remember it. That's sort of the main focus for me. It's, yeah, you're, I'm going to have some games that I'm going to remember and they're going to be amazing, but it's laughing with your mates at the end saying, oh, do you remember when we did this at that game or do you remember when you did that stupid thing? Or, and that's one of the most exciting things, I think. And that, that- Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what makes rugby like unique, isn't it? There's no other sport really like it. 
No, I don't think you'll find well, it. Well, you, you can go anywhere in the country and anywhere, walk into a rugby club, and you can have a beer with someone, have a chat, and they will talk to you. Well, it's even after the game, you know, rugby was a little bit more enthusiastic in our day, might I say, because you can't do anything now because there's cameras, everything, you can't touch people. In our day, I remember we used to get out of Wales. It's on a Wednesday night. We used to play Wednesday nights. You know, now this you only play once a week or whatever, rest. We used to play Saturdays. A Wednesday night we played down in Wales somewhere. And we had some proper good fun games. But you give as good as you get, I think was the motto in those days. Yeah, don't back off. Just give as good as you get. But then afterwards, afterwards, beer, chat with the opposite number. You know, you'd be friends almost to a point. You've got something in common. So next time you saw him, you're right, mate. So it's, that's, that's the diff great thing of rugby as a sport. You get lifelong friends. And you played a few times in the Prem Cup. Is, if you, if you come, did you come down to watch? Yeah, yeah, we always watch. We always saw there somewhere. What's that like, seeing your son run out? That's oh, brilliant. You know, uh, yeah, no, it's great. It's a great feeling. You just sort of think it's, he's making it. and Yeah, you're dead proud. You can't really say. It's interesting. You get different emotions. When you go through the academy, I think you can see parents who are pushy, parents who really just want their dad, lad to be the best, some parents who think their lads are never going to be good enough or they just as not as good as they should be. And you just, I just watched that and you just watch him play and every time he's played, great. You know, you had a good game, you lost. I think it was Kev Mannion said, once said to me, they were playing, I think it was a South West England, South West boys. Yeah. You were losing, you weren't playing very well. Yeah. You, you were playing quite well. But I said to Kev, well, this isn't too good. He said, no, it's not about the winning at this stage. We're just looking at the guys, how they're playing, if they're doing the right things. And... Actually, to be fair to Gloucester Academy, they had it, I think they've had it right. Because all through Arthur's era, it wasn't about the winning. It was about taking part, but watching the guys develop. Some guys, some teams you play, they come out, they'd be so programmed, they'd be playing away, they'd play players to win. Whereas Gloucester go out and they swap the team players about. It's all about putting a bit of character into them. I think that's important. You know, you don't stereotype people straight away. It's all right you said Arthur's... Yeah. You know, he's born, bred second row, but he is a second row because he's six foot eight. So he's going to be second row. So that's just the way it goes. But he's quite happy doing that. But there's other guys played, some play fly half and now playing back row or centres playing hookers. So it does change. And you've got to let the guy just express himself, not say you're going to do this. So that's just, which is good, I think, for the academy. Well, I'll tell you, to be honest, the first time I thought really, yep, yeah, I think he's going to make it. Was we played um, Gloss under 18s against London Irish under 18s. Dean Close. It might have been the first under-18 okay, yeah. game. But I came away and I got a yellow card for flattening the <laughs> scrub off. <Do> you remember? <laughs> well, it was high, it was unlucky, it was fair enough. The flattening the scrub went off. And he came back on and I thought, yep. I came away from that game thinking, yeah, I think he's got enough to make it. That's the only time I saw it. First time I really thought, yes, he's got it. You know, it's, Was that the way he came back on? And... Yeah, he just the way he sort of played in the game. He got a bit of control. It just, yeah, I could tell then that he'd got something that says, yes, I could step up. Because it's all the way through, you're stepping up all the time and it's pushing the lads and then you funny, suddenly find some of the guys won't make it, you know, or haven't quite got it. Yeah. It's like everything, everybody can train, everybody can look very good at training, but it's actually when you're out on that pitch for 80 minutes and it's your decision, it's not the coach, they can tell you everything, it's your decision then. So that was the first time I sort of said, yep, yeah, I reckon he's going to enjoy this. And again, he's got to, you've got to enjoy it. It's no good if you come off thinking, oh, I hate this. Well, don't do it, you know. You, it's, it's, not your, it's not your vocation then, sorry. And rugby, rugby and farming, I mean, do you think the dragon work on the farm probably, I don't know, what's yeah. harder being a... What's harder? Player or <laughs> don't say work on the old chat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's harder? That is a good question. No, they do. I think they do go hand in hand unbelievably well. I mean, I never, before, I think before I started under 17, I never lifted a weight up, never done anything. Even through 17s, I was probably one of the weakest. But then out on the rugby pitch, I felt probably one of the ones up there, like I'm physically able to do stuff. And that's one thing as well, like I always got the mick taken out of me, like probably a bit weak in bench press and stuff like that when I was 18, nine, uh, 18 19. And they always said, ah, oh, chuck him a lamb, he'll throw it out of that easy. Which is true, I, I would. And I think that's why it works so well because you're not, these days you're like, you're tailored to do this gym program and you can lift it like that, but you lift it in a certain technique. As me, you don't you don't have time to have a technique. If sheep's running at you, you got to pick it up and throw it away. Like, um, yeah. But yeah, no, they do, and it's also like the key fitness as well. Yeah. Like, on busy like lambing, for instance, our busiest time of the year, mm. you're out at seven, you're in at nine, and you don't stop all the time. You don't stop. You have a quick breakfast, quick lunch. It's always like drink coffee on the yeah, go. Farming's a good sort of 
You work hard all week and then you go out on Saturday and play rugby. It's all vent that frustration. Yeah. So you can release it a bit yeah. on yeah. <laughs> certain ways, which is good, you know, and it's always... And you always, like you say, farming, you're always on your feet and that, so you're a bit fit anyway for it. What do you reckon so, easier? What do I reckon easier? Oh, playing rugby's easier. <laughs> Without question, you know. <laughs>